So everyone's had a lot to say about that little spectacle at this year's Oscars ceremony. Most of it has been unhelpful, and let's face it, this probably won't be helpful either. Still, for the three people who missed it, Chris Rock made an ill-judged joke at the expense of Jada Pinkett Smith, the wife of Will Smith, who then proceeded to slap Rock, shout obscenities at him, and then won the Best Actor Award a few minutes later. I thought they would never be able to improve on the time they got the Best Picture winner wrong, giving it to La La Land and then a few minutes later taking it back and giving it to Moonlight instead. That was amazing, and I never thought anything so interesting would ever happen at the Oscars ever again. I was wrong. The big event overshadowed the rest of the big event, needless to say, and the shame of it is that some genuinely historic moments have been passed over in commentary that are worth acknowledging. Like Coda, the Best Picture winner, possibly the most obscure Best Picture winner ever. It only had three nominations in total, and apparently it's the first time a film has won Best Picture with so few nominations since Grand Hotel in 1932. Also the first Best Picture to have debuted on a streaming platform, and only the second ever Oscar for a deaf performer. I hadn't even heard of CODA before the ceremony, and I dare say a lot of people still haven't. As for the Battle of the Century itself, there's been speculation that all of it was staged, and I may be wrong about what I'm about to say, but I don't think that it was, because I don't think either participant is that good of an actor, and I can't really see what they would have been trying to achieve with the hoax anyway. But they did force lots of white people to suddenly have opinions about two black guys, and it was kind of weirdly uncomfortable watching that. The funniest reactions, of course, came from the ones complaining that this normalises violence as if violence weren't already a normalised part of American culture somehow. It's, uh, it's like Lee Harvey Oswald didn't get murdered on live TV in 1963 or something. And worse than Bud Dwyer shooting himself on live TV a couple of decades later. And don't forget the comedians who are now terrified they'll never be able to make a joke punching down at an undeserving target ever again for fear of getting punched. Just something else for them to complain about along with the political correctness. At least Judd Apatow deleted his tweet where he cried about how Chris Rock could have been killed. For what little it may be worth, I look at it this way. Chris Rock shouldn't have said what he did, and Will Smith probably shouldn't have reacted as he did, though I understand why he did. I don't know, I'm not Will Smith, so it wasn't my wife being insulted, and I have no idea what I would have done in his place if it had been. I've seen some people standing up for him for standing up for Jada, but I've seen a lot more condemning him for doing so. Quite a few of those went on about how Smith slapping Rock was really about his bruised ego, and what about Jada's own agency, she's a grown adult who didn't need no man to look after her, etc. And fair enough, but uh, it was weird how no one, as far as I could see, was actually asking her what she thought about the whole situation. And she took a couple of days to finally offer a vague statement that didn't actually really say anything. Obviously I respect Jada's right to say anything or nothing, I just thought it was odd that, unless I missed something as I may have done, no one seemed to be asking. And I do wonder what the response would have been if she'd been the one that slapped Chris Rock. What if it had been someone else getting slapped though? What if it had been Chris Brown instead of Chris Rock? I've seen some comments regretting that no one slapped Ricky Gervais when he was the Oscars host, several dozen people making that joke which remains hilarious every time, obviously, and never gets old no matter how many hundreds of times you see it on Twitter. But seriously though, what if it had been someone who wasn't Chris Rock? Someone white, for example. Let's say Richard Spencer. I'm sure we all remember Spencer getting walloped 
after Donald Trump's inauguration in 2017, don't we? And some people did quibble about whether or not it was the right thing to do, but the general response seems to have been that it was a golden moment. And a number of musical remixes ensued where the punch was synchronised to various songs, including Born in the USA, Blue Monday, In the Air Tonight, Whip It, Yakety Sax, We Will Rock You, and, obviously, Nazi Punk's Fuck Off. But my own favourite was one using the opening of Angel of Death by Slayer. Spencer getting thumped on a loop to Dave Lombardo's super-fast thrash drumming was both an awesome piece of editing and a masterpiece of comedy. And I feel fairly sure that quite a few of the people I've seen being vocal about their disapproval of Will Smith, the ones going on about violence never being the answer, would be kind of okay with Richard Spencer or indeed any other Nazi getting punched. I was looking over the Twitter feed of a friend who'd been one of those people because I was looking for something else that they'd posted and... I saw they'd retweeted something about the punk band the Dropkick Murphys getting understandably pissed at some neo-Nazi gang wearing one of their shirts in a video and accordingly challenging them to a fight over Twitter. And Ken Casey from the band turned up to the designated battlefield. The Nazis did not. Casey meant it, and apparently he has a history of beating the shit out of Nazis at Dropkick Murphy's shows. And apparently that's okay. Maybe things are just different with Nazis, because their existence really involves violence. It's inherent to them in a way that it isn't with Will Smith and Chris Rock. Nazism requires things like ethnic cleansing and eugenics and eradicating degeneracy, whatever that might mean. And these things are not accomplished without some sort of violence, and I'm also not sure how they're fought without violence. Diplomacy never really worked with Hitler, as history shows. But violence is never the answer, apparently, even when maybe it's kind of cool. Like maybe if Jada Pinkett Smith had hit Chris Rock, or if Ken Casey had got to take out that Nazi mob. But these things didn't happen. What did happen was that uh, one rich man hit another rich man in a room full of rich people, interrupting their indulgent celebration of themselves. Such bad taste to bring about the end of civilization live on TV when children might have been watching. In other news, the war between Saudi Arabia and Yemen just entered its eighth year. And I just thought I'd point that out, because I'm sure the people of Yemen and obviously the people of Ukraine too at the moment, wish that the Will and Chris show was the worst thing happening in the world right now. 